so I'm, you know, I'm an activist and a libertarian. And when that was why I was first attracted to, to Bitcoin, because I thought that it would totally upend the central banks and the federal reserves <laughs> sure. um, and gave people freedom and privacy and control of their own money. But now looking back, it's like, wow, these central banks and these big power players are really quite cunning. And so they had this technology that's a threat to their very existence and they didn't go out, you know, they didn't just give up and walk away. They're like, well, maybe we can leverage this technology ourselves. The big difference, of course, is that Bitcoin and other popular cryptocurrencies are decentralized. Well, these central banks are wanting to leverage blockchain technology and the ledger and the ability to have this digital money that's trackable and traceable. Uh, and they're going to create it in a centralized way. So really, I think what it is, is it's central banks coming into the 21st century, but it's also there's an element of control. So, of course, China, many people are aware that the Chinese Communist Party has this social credit score system. Right. And whenever you have a central bank digital currency, eventually it'll probably be the only game in town as far as the status quo, you know, mainstream money. Right. Um, and one thing that Brian Rose pointed out, no, it was actually Robert Kiyosaki. He's he's a quite the rebel himself as well. And he's really into cryptocurrency, which I think is cool. He's the guy that wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad, if folks aren't familiar. Uh, he was talking about when you have the central bank digital currencies, essentially it's going to do away with the whole need to have a bank in the first place because you'll have this one house that issues everything. And there can be financial instruments like with decentralized finance, you can do cryptocurrency uh, finances through a centralized source, the central bank digital currency. So I'm, uh, I don't like it at all. And my hope is that there's enough free people out there that are like, well, you guys have your central bank, your fed coin or your digital yuan or whatever. Obviously this is going to be much harder to do in China because I think freedom may, the, the little flame of hope for freedom may have gone out in China long ago, but it's definitely alive here in the United States of America. So I'm hoping that people will just use better money, use money that's not manipulated, use money that doesn't enable them to be controlled. Because the implication with the central bank digital currency is that you can track and trace exactly how things are getting spent. And if you attach that with some sort of social credit score system, like apparently Great Britain is doing research on giving incentives for people making healthy choices based on what they purchase at the grocery store. So that would be a challenge. You mean you could figure it out with credit cards, but it's all this, you know, it's kind of decentralized, all the different networks and banks and Visa and MasterCard. But if you have everyone gets issued these central bank digital currencies, it would very much be easy to see where those currencies end up. And then if it's tied through with the barcode or whatever it is you purchase at the grocery store, they can easily just turn off your ability to do that. It's very much like the mark of the beast that was written about in the book of Revelation. So I'm definitely concerned about it, but I feel optimistic uh, that cryptocurrency and this uncontrollable ability for people to do business with one another, the cat's out of the bag. And I don't think we're going to be able to put it back. 